Welcome to my travel vlog of my day in San Diego. After an 11 hour flight with my family, I finally arrived in San Diego. We were staying in the Sheraton Hotel and after checking in in the main tower, we went to the Bay Tower which was just a quick shuttle car away. And our room was very comfortable, spacious and lovely with big soft cozy beds and a bathtub etc. But that's not what makes this room different, no no. The best thing about this room is, drum roll please, the amazing ocean view. Standing on the balcony, I was mesmerized by the extraordinary view, I mean the ocean. I've never seen such blue water and the weather was amazing, perfectly clear with a few fluffy clouds here and there. If I wasn't just staying in San Diego for a day, I would 100% dedicate one whole day to just sitting on the balcony and reading because you can't get that in the UK because of the weather. I was also on the ninth floor so there was a gentle ocean breeze. But I couldn't tattle too long in the hotel since I had places to be. First stop was to see the warships. A quick Uber drive away and I was there, in front of a monstrosity in a good way. Like I was in awe. If it's impressive to look at now, imagine what, what people in World War II thought. That wasn't just the warship, you also had statues and memorials, such as this famous photo after victory over Japan in the Times Square. At first you would think it's like really romantic, but um, fun fact, not really. The kind of sailor just grabbed a random woman from the streets and kissed her. And that's how this famous photo was taken. So that's a fun fact. Obviously there were more things to commemorate World War II. You could spend ages there. Um, I would say it's definitely a great stop if you happen to travel there, especially if you like history. Since San Diego is next to the sea, there has to be a pier. Again, I felt like weather was on my side because it wasn't too hot, the sun didn't burn my skin, unlike another place that I will visit a few days from today. Stay tuned for that vlog. But yeah, you could see yachts and a lot of speedboats. The pier also had some interesting decor on the lamppost, which kind of just made the whole thing far more aesthetically pleasing and there were a few of these unique things that I have no idea what it means or symbolizes kind of like modern art like I don't get it but I appreciate it and of course there are people selling and performing like this guy on a stand playing rock music I'm guessing I don't know exactly but I feel like it's really cool to be performing in such a nice scenery though I might play something more calming to match the scenery you remember the speedboats I was talking about? well here's one well two technically um, I, it looked like, like the boat was just bouncing on the sea which I felt like would be kind of bumpy to ride but yeah the port also had this little village as it calls itself with bars, restaurants and shops. Again, if I lived here, it would be absolutely amazing to walk along this village because you feel a sense of serenity when you when you are kind of just walking here, mindlessly strolling. You could come here to have a meal because it has a lot of restaurants or go for a jog, which I've seen people do, or just for a casual stroll because it's multifunctional and I'll just let you appreciate this nice scene. Did I mention I saw something very British? A fish and chip shop. Well, I know that's a place that I won't be going because I've had plenty of fish and chips. Also I saw some ducks, which you can see in every park in the UK, but it's not every day that you get to see cute little ducklings. Very adorable. Very cute little ducklings right there and a bunch of ducks. We were on a tight schedule so I only stopped at a few stops, but this one I liked it the most. They're so lovely aren't they? They're really delicate and precious.
and it's just a whole shop full of them. Mesmerizing. Mosaic handcrafts, which sold a lot of these lanterns, I guess you can call them that. These things immediately caught my eye as I was walking past because the light refracted into my eye and I was completely hooked. They don't just sell lanterns though, they also have a lot of other handmade stuff which I think are individually painted, possibly. I'm not an expert, but they have these plates and pots and bowls and vases which are just really special. And also they have these fancy teacups that feel way too luxurious to ever hold any British tea. Obviously, what's a handmade store without any handmade jewellery? It's just all sparkly, glittery and I just wanted to bag them all. I mean crystals, every gold stream to have a whole shop of jewellery to themselves. Off on the streets, my first impression of the US streets were that they were clean and wide, but the idea will be quickly overthrown by my later experience, and you shall see why. Funny thing, I saw Manchester, but not the city, the hotel. Fun. There was this parade about the sausage party. Initially, I thought there was a campaign about going vegan, which, in my defence, isn't wrong because the movie is kind of about food escaping humans, though I don't exactly recommend anyone not eating anything because they're sympathetic towards carrots and broccoli. Now for the main event, dinner. We had dinner at this Japanese restaurant which is known for its barbecue, but I'm very indecisive, so the hardest thing about this was ordering because the server literally brought a stack of menus to choose from. I was overwhelmed with options like which kinds of meats to get, blah blah blah. Finally though, my family settled on a two person meal that was more than enough to make me feel stuffed. After the food arrived, it was amazing, the meat was tender, the I guess salad was refreshing and also the soup. I'm typically not exactly a fan of miso soup but that miso soup was actually good because it was really soothing but honestly I, it could just be that I've had too much airplane food but I enjoyed my experience there, it was amazing the seaweed, the tofu, everything just worked together so well also this is my first time trying Japanese barbecue so when they brought in a pair of scissors I was confused but later I realised you could use it to cut the meat into smaller chunks which was life changing like the meat was already really tender, but this just elevated it to another standard. And that is the end of the day, that wraps it all up. And this is a quick glimpse of what the next day will look like. This is me on my journey to my next destination. And that's the end of this vlog, stay tuned for the next vlog. Thank you for watching, subscribe and like, and I'll see you next time. Bye!